today. If you are watching us on YouTube, you might see a familiar face joining me on the podcast for a brand new segment. Leah Adams, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Erica, for having me. I'm so excited for this new segment. I'm excited for this segment too. And if you are watching or listening, you know who Leah is. She is a very popular face in the LUV community. Um, You have heard her story on the podcast. You've seen her face on our Instagram, on our website, on our everything. I mean, you're on even our Amazon account (laughs) as well. So you are definitely one of the faces of LUV just as much as I am. But This new segment that I'm excited to dive into is talking about the top five stories in the skin cancer, sun safety community. And we were talking before about how this is like our version of like pop culture and the stories and the information that you and I just eat up and love to talk about. So we're going to kick things off for the top five stories of October. And I'm excited to take the audience on this journey with us as we talk through some things that have been happening in this space because a lot has been happening. A lot has been happening. It's crazy. All these different things we're going to cover today. Some people probably have heard of them or maybe not, but we're going to dive deep. We are. We are. And we're going to start with a story that I feel like everyone has really been talking about. And that's about Jimmy Buffett, um, who died from a rare form of skin cancer. And again, I've seen this a lot in our community on Instagram and people have been talking about it, which, of course, it's a sad occurrence. And it's so sad to hear of instances like this. But I've been really happy to see the conversations that have started because of this kind of information coming to light. Um, So the first story we pulled is about Jimmy Buffett, and he passed away after a four-year battle with Merkel cell carcinoma um, and died in his home. And I wanted to really outline what Merkel cell carcinoma is. So Leah, do you have like a definition to give people, you know, who might not know, which is totally fine and understanding of what it is? No, I I came prepared, Erica. So um, Merkel cell carcinoma, it's a rare and aggressive form of skin cancer. And Merkel Merkel cell is diagnosed only in about um, 2,500 times a year in the United States. So it's super rare. Um, I mean, I've had melanoma and I've heard of other forms of skin cancer, but really didn't hear a lot about Merkel cell a lot until unfortunately Jimmy Buffett died. And I didn't even know that he had it, you know, it was like, it was a very hush hush, you know, type of situation. But I agree with you, Erica, I feel like it's unfortunate when things happen like this um, in our world, but on the flip side of it, or the positive side of it, it brings to light these rare forms of cancer that are deadly. And it's, mm-hmm. again, sad that somebody has to pass in order to bring awareness and education about it. But I think mm-hmm. a lot more people, thousands to millions of people now are more educated and aware of the seriousness of Merkel cell carcinoma. Yeah, I completely agree. And just because, you know, it is a little bit rarer, I mean, there was not a lot of information about like life expectancy or what it even looked like. So what does this form of cancer look like? Because all of them present a little bit differently. And if we're not educated about what these rare forms look like, it's harder to know. Like, I mean, we, I feel like the majority of people listening know what a melanoma looks like, right? Mm -hmm. Which is fantastic. But if you're Mm -hmm. looking for that, you might not notice this form of cancer if it is growing or progressing on your skin. You might just not know what to look for. Yeah. So after doing some research on Merkel cell carcinoma, um, Merkel cell usually appears as a single painless bump on the skin. um, And it's usually skin that is sun exposed. Um, So sun exposure and having a weakened immune system can also affect the risk of getting Merkel cell carcinoma. Um, Like I said, it's very rare. It's a rare disease. Um, But and it's I also saw too, until recent years, it had carried a life expectancy of five months. Yes. Yeah, I saw that stat too. And it was, I mean, one, it's super sobering because that is very invasive and rapid of five months. Um, And I think one thing that is interesting is in his case, I mean, I believe I read he had it for four years, um, which is quite a bit longer than that, but still not a very long time. And it makes you 
bring into question, is it because we're not looking for the right things? Is it because we're not getting intervention, preventative health care early enough? Um, but five months, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of crazy. I know. And if you think about it, I, to be honest, I wasn't a Jimmy Buffett fan. Um, his music is not my vibe, but <laughs> I will say if you look at his albums and you look at the song lyrics and really mm. everything is about the sun and beach yeah. and good times and all that kind of stuff. And if you look at photos of him, he was a really tan individual. Um, right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's sad, but I want to say I'm not shocked um, that something right. like this happened to an individual that clearly I think supposedly led that lifestyle of being in the sun, living your mm -hmm. best life on the beach, you know, having drinks and having a good time. Um, right. And, you know, trust me, I get it. I had that lifestyle. And then you get skin cancer and it completely changes your life. Um, so, you know, I guess it's just also what I read as well too, Erica, is that this is also um, a form of cancer that is um, more seen in older individuals as well. Okay. And Jimmy Buffett was older. Um, right. So it's just, it's so important to, you know, know about skin cancers like this. And it's so important to, to know your risk, you know, and how these different types of skin cancer kind of have their own little niche a little bit. Um, right. And this one seems to be again, super rare, but it is something that unfortunately could kill you. So yeah. 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 And going back into when you were talking about the lifestyle, I mean, I think that plays a huge role in it too, that it's it's providing this opportunity to have this conversation about if you're drinking out in the sun, well, that actually is an increased risk of getting a sunburn and sun exposure that harms. Um, of course, any kind of sun exposure has the ability to harm, but there are certain things that might amplify your risk in this lifestyle of drinking alcohol and being on the water. And I mean, of course, things that we all love to do when we're having a good time, right? You want to go to the beach, you want to be on the water, you want to enjoy your life, but acknowledging that that might increase your risk of getting certain forms of skin cancer. And I think this is just an opportunity to have those conversations and kind of a not force it on you kind of way, because it is a pop culture story. You know, he was a very popular and famous person. So people knew this lifestyle, right? They they witnessed that and they went to the concerts and they listened to the music and they kind of lived that life. So it offers a lens to kind of reconsider some things for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And obviously rest in peace. And I'm sure that, you know, him being an icon, um, you know, his music's going to live on probably forever. But also mm -hmm. I hope also how he died also resonates with people and it educates people and you know, makes them aware of their risks. Um, and speaking of risks, um, I think our next um, topic that we wanted to talk about was um, the Skin Cancer Foundation put out an article, um, I think in the last month or so, um, talking about can working as a firefighter increase your risks of um, developing skin cancer? And I guess firefighter, I never really thought about, you know, them mm -hmm. being at a higher risk. Um, but basically, it talks about how there's been a long, um, long time link between career firefighters and cancer, um, including skin cancer. Um, and recent research looks more specifically at melanoma. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's just, it's, I don't know, it's not something that I would think of, you know, and, um, right. but if you think about it, it's not always just firefighters, right? It could be totally pilots, it could be construction workers. I mean, um, I, uh, I was talking to actually another LUV ambassador about a month or so ago, I posted something on Instagram and it was talking about how like only like, I think it was like 4% of construction workers, like either have access to sun, um, like sunscreen or UPF 50 right. clothing, or just don't have the opportunity to seek shade due to their, you know, working talk. conditions. Yeah. And um, her husband is one of these, you know, workers and, um, it's, a really sad thing. And I just wish more people knew about, you know, the importance of it. And also that these jobs and in these positions and companies created more opportunities for providing, you know, sunscreen or UPF 50 clothing, or I don't know, shade breaks. I know that sounds, you know, silly, but it could yeah. potentially save somebody's life and help them. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Erica, though, but 
Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think one thing that's really come to mind as we've been talking about this is one pilots because I, gosh, the stat has been going around about pilots and sun exposure and having the altitude and how it increase potential sun exposure. And of course, you know, you think, well, the windows have certain coating on them. Well, you shouldn't be able to. Well, it's hard to know a lot of the time because certain UVA, UVB, UVB rays are able to do different things. So it depends on what the coating is, if it's glass versus plastic and all of those things. So it is tricky because the stats that have come out are very sobering because it is an increased risk of having that sun exposure because it's so much stronger. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, of course, there are certain opinions that say otherwise, but I just always take the stance of like, just better safe than sorry. Um, I think that comes from, you know, being the daughter of someone who had melanoma. Um, I always take that it's better safe than sorry kind of approach to things. Um, but you also brought up construction workers. And that's something that's been top of mind as well, because I was I was telling you, we um, I went to a wedding a couple of weeks ago and one of my friends works in the construction field. So she um, is out there with the workers all day long. And she came up to me. She's like, we really need to find a way to get your son safe apparel to these workers because we are out there all day long. And even if people know they're not in a position where they can easily get access to things. I mean, if you think about reapplying sunscreen, well, that means you have to have a place to keep the sunscreen that's out of the sun so it doesn't become compromised. And it's just all of these things that there are so many hurdles. So it really takes a company acknowledging these hurdles to keep the employees safe, um, which I get is a huge ask, but it is something that, I mean, we're hyper aware of and we understand the risk. And I mean, these certain jobs that increase your risk, I mean, it's really hard to get acknowledgement for it because it's like, well, you're doing your job, like you're a firefighter or you're a pilot, like you can't not be in those positions. So how can we best equip ourselves to continue doing our job, but not in a risky environment? Right. No, it's so funny. Um, Before I had skin cancer, melanoma, I, you know, would drive back by a construction site and not even think twice about like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, their skin. It was more like, they must be hot. Like it's nine yeah, degrees right. outside. <laughs> like I feel bad for them. But now when I drive by a construction site and I see these both men and women so tanned and I'm just like, oh my goodness. Like, you know, and I get it, you know, they're, they're doing their job, like you said, Erica, but it would just be so nice if there was somehow an opportunity to provide them sunscreen, you know, in a appropriate temperature manner, or, yeah. you know, maybe offer them like, I mean, even like fishermen and stuff like that, there's those really nice long UPF, you know, 50 right. clothing, long sleeves that they could be wearing under their what they may need mm-hmm. to wear, you know, the yellow construction stuff, like there could be ways it's just like getting access to those companies and to those groups of individuals um, to kind of open their eyes to this stuff. Kind of like the same thing as Jimmy Buffett. I think a lot of people's eyes are not opened to the seriousness yet of skin cancer. I feel like the people's eyes that are open either know somebody that's had skin cancer, has it, passed away from it, um, or maybe made the headlines. But it honestly, you know, to your point, Erica, it sometimes takes a loved one to get it or yourself to really right. take it seriously. And I'm hoping as time goes on and we have these podcasts and we have these brands like LUV that we're able to make it like known, more known to people, like, I don't know, brushing your teeth or washing your hands. Like, where's your sunscreen? Where's your UPF 50? I would just, I hope that I live to see a day like that, where it's just much more talked about. There's more access for these workers that are doing important work. Like we need to travel, like we need to get places. We need the roads to be fixed. You know, we need to, if there's a fire, there needs to be a firefighter (laughs) there, you know, like, so it's not like we can't abolish these jobs. We just need to equip these folks with the tools that they need that could positively impact their life and health. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. And, you know, to go back to, we've been talking about headlines starting to pick up on more and more of these kinds of things and giving them actually the time of day to start conversations. And one of the one I knew we had to talk about is Khloe Kardashian, because she has been very open about her melanoma battle and has been talking about the recovery process and even using her platform to urge her followers to pay attention to sun safety 
and their own skin. And she was talking about how she thought that this spot on her face, on her cheek, she was like, oh, I just thought it was a pimple. I thought it was a pimple. I didn't think anything of it. So she's kind of talking about the process of like something feels off and you're just like, oh, wow, I've had this pimple for a long time. That's a little weird. Maybe it's time to, you know, go seek, um, you know, a, a professional opinion. And I think this does great things for advocacy and education. I mean, I know, Leah, you've seen a lot about this story, too. I mean, on social media and beyond. Yeah. When I think it, I think news broke about it when they released the the Hulu trailer of the new season. Mm-hmm. And um, then everybody like in the skin cancer space, dermatology space was like cutting the one that was just talking about melanoma and what happened to her. Mm-hmm. And you saw both sides of the coin, right? So you saw the the first side of the coin being like, wow, this is a huge deal. Somebody that has millions of followers and eyes on her, like this is her opportunity, you know, to talk about the fastest spreading, deadliest form of skin cancer, melanoma, yeah. um, which is like, great. Love that from that part of the advocacy. But then you saw the other flip side yeah. of the coin. <laughs> And her going to the lengths she went to, to cover up her face and to cover up the scar and Mm -hmm. talking about, um, you know, like there were some photos leaked about like how airbrushed, like her photos have been. And I feel a little 50, 50 about that personally. Um, 50% of me, I've never had melanoma and hopefully I never do on my face. I've never even had a biopsy yet on my face. The closest was behind my ear. Um, I have to imagine as a woman, that is really scary. I mean, our face, like, you know, we we pay a lot of attention to our face, right? Our skincare Mm -hmm. routine, everything like the face is like the first thing. Um, especially somebody like Khloe Kardashian that has, you know, the reputation she has, you know, she's got multiple brands, like she works for multiple brands, her whole family's an empire. And the fact is that's happening to her in her face, like, Mm -hmm. that has to be a huge deal. But the other half of me is just like, you know what, a scar doesn't have to be looked at as ugly. It tells a story, it shows that you have won a battle, you've gone through something. And you know, it could be a part of your story. It makes you unique. Um, and honestly, I'm sure she has like the best plastic surgeon in the entire world. So yeah. I'm sure that they <laughs> for made sure that star look pretty darn good, you know? So yeah. I, I don't know. What are, what are your thoughts about it? I know I, I kind of fall on the same scale of one, it's so great that these conversations are happening and that she's showing, you know, a scar isn't that big of a deal. You can just cover it. It can take, you know, you can go get work done after the fact. And I I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, you know, however you perceive your version of, version of beauty. And, you know, as someone who does have biopsy scars, I get it. Like, I do understand that you don't always want the identity of like skin cancer following you around and always being there. But the reality of it is like that does become part of your story, right? That's yep. like, and it's also part of the advocacy work that you get to do if you choose that you want to pursue that kind of avenue. You know, it is right. not an ugly thing. It is a strength kind of just, you know, being showcased that you went through something that is less than ideal that no one would wish on themselves or a loved one or a friend or anyone of the above. But it is it is really hard, especially for, you know, the Kardashians who are known for like personifying and showcasing certain beauty standards, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's very tricky because it's putting a lot of pressure on them to be not human. And they're humans. So I think it calls Mm -hmm. into question, you know, whatever you personally believe if they don't showcase that, that's okay. You can choose what works best for you and what you want to do. But I think scars are beautiful. And I think if you want to get treatment for it, that's okay. If you don't, that's also okay. It's your choice. Yeah. And this is not her first rodeo with melanoma. I mean, she's had it more than once. And so, um, you know, again, we obviously don't know how Chloe's feeling on the inside. And she, you know, she's obviously entitled to keep that, you know, to herself. But I have to imagine, too, to kind of have empathy with her, maybe getting this again was very triggering to her and really hard for her. 
um, on top of other stuff that was going on in her personal life. Um, you know, cause I, I do watch the Kardashians. She has been through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I will say disclaimer. Um, so I have to imagine maybe it was just a lot for her and maybe she's figuring it out. And to be honest, from somebody that's had melanoma, mine is on my chest. Um, it did not happen overnight that I was okay with a very large scar on my chest. Um, mm -hmm. Like that took months to years to try to um, re like define for myself what is beautiful. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, having a scar, like, what does that mean? Having multiple yeah. scars, what does that mean? Um, so I understand that maybe right now it's hard and it's fresh and it's new, which it is. Um, but maybe over time, um, she'll have a different um, perspective and be able to, you know, turn her scar into power and use that mm -hmm. as her voice to um, really share um, you know, how important and how serious melanoma is. And right. I, I guess that would just be my hope that she can kind of find that voice and courage um, to spin it into that rather mm -hmm. than cover it up, hide it, and let's not talk right. about it. Kind of thing. Right. I agree. And I think one thing that's been shocking to me is that we haven't seen big brands reaching out to her. I'm like, a sunscreen brand should jump on this story and I maybe things are going on behind the scenes I'm like where is Neutrogena right now like where are these big brands who can yeah. kind of use her as a spokesperson and I would imagine that's kind of going on behind the scenes but I'm like where are our sunscreen brands what are they doing right now this is like the perfect I, opportunity I think it's your opportunity Erica <laughs> I think LUB should reach out to Khloe Kardashian and say hey <laughs> Female to female. This is what we got. Do you want to be a part of it? All right. We'll send you a tennis dress. I promise. <laughs> I love it. No, that's awesome. And speaking of sunscreens, um, I think our next topic, um, I feel like the buzzword right now in the skin cancer community and sun safety community is all about mineral sunscreen, right? Yeah. Um, you know, talking about, you know, why it's you know, the best one or the one you should be using. And um, I feel like it's it's gaining a lot of momentum. And um, there's a there's a quote here um, that I wanted to share with everybody. So um, avobenzene, oxybenzone and octin octinoxate. We're going to go um, with it. Yeah. <laughs> roll with it. Yeah. Um, they are common um, um, ingredients that are found in chemical sunscreen, which is different from mineral, um, that may irritate those with sensitive skin. And so I think the reason why mineral sunscreen um, is growing so much is because mineral sunscreens are hypoallergenic and less prone to irritate the skin or produce allergy reactions because they are made of uh, benign physical blocks. Um, so the market for mineral sunscreens continues to expand as more consumers look for sun protection options suitable for their sensitive skin. Um, so there's been like, you know, it's not just happening now. For years, there's been a debate, you know, mineral sunscreen versus chemical sunscreen. And um, to be transparent, I use both. Um, mm -hmm. I use both mineral and chemical. I have been using mineral more recently. Um, for years, I've used um, on and off, not a lot because I got melanoma, but I was using chemical sunscreen. So now I'm kind of even still figuring out like what sunscreen works best for me. Um, <laughs> I'm I am, I did not come up with this phrase. I don't know where I heard it, but I am a firm believer that the best sunscreen is the one that you remember to put on, whether mm -hmm. it's chemical, whether it's mineral. Um, and there are so many brands out there, Erica. I know you just yeah. kind of mentioned a few and, um, you know, I know LUV is, you know, been partnering with MD Solar Sciences, which is another great sunscreen, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of hard to pick your favorite and like, you could have like a really good chemical sunscreen that maybe you use on your face, but you have a really good mineral sunscreen that you use on your body or vice versa. So um, what are your thoughts on this kind of debate? And, you know, um, what, what have you been using and what do you like more? Let me know. Yeah, I think I stand very firmly in the fact that like you should choose whatever works best for you. I mean, it's really interesting because the first time this happened to me was a few weeks ago where I was at a pop-up and someone came up to me and there was like, they were saying how, is this mineral or chemical sunscreen? Because we of course have that MD Solar Sciences um, mineral sunscreen that we love. And 
you know, I was talking them through, you know, it's a hundred percent mineral, this product is hypoallergenic. It won't clog your pores, all of that stuff. And they're like, thank God, because I just can't stand chemical sunscreen. I was like, oh, is there any particular reason? And she kind of told me, well, you know, all the studies that have come out and has all of this bad stuff. And I'm like, that's totally fine. If that is your opinion and your choice for your personal body, go for it. Do whatever you feel um, is best. But as I continue to talk to her, I realized she was a cancer survivor. So she didn't want to take any additional risks on the items and the products that she puts onto her body. I'm like, this makes so much sense now. You know, so I ended up, you know, talking to her for quite a while and she bought some shirts because she was like, I'm just so anything I put on my body, I'm just like super, like, I don't want it to cause any harm. And I was like, that makes sense. So whatever your opinion is on that stuff, it's so hard to have like a five minute conversation and you form an opinion during that time. Like, Oh, why do they have such a strong opinion about this? But as you get to the core of it, you're like, Oh, they're a cancer survivor. That makes total sense. You know, she just finished treatment. She does not want to do a darn thing that's going to cause right. harm to her body. No, that makes total sense. And, you know, I think that you bring up a good point, Erica, that we do kind of have to respect everybody's opinions, you know, around what they choose to put on their body. Um, and then, you know, I know another thing about mineral sunscreen is that, you know, it's it's safer for the environment as far as like reef friendly. Um, it's got a lot more zinc in it rather than, you know, the other chemicals that are in chemical sunscreen. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. Um, and I feel like there doesn't need to be a debate about it. Um, I feel like there needs to be more of a debate about like, you know, like, take this oil, it serves as a, you know, form of sunscreen, or if you, you know, eat this more in your diet, it serves as like a protection of sunscreen. I think people need to be debating that more (laughs) than, uh, you know, mineral versus chemical sunscreen. But um, like I said, I, I have brands where I love their mineral sunscreen. And then I have brands where I love their chemical sunscreen. And if you think about it too, to the point of chemical sunscreen, there's got to be something in the product that protects you from the sun. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people get caught up on like all the different chemicals. But if you think about it, everything serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are safer sunscreens than others. But I think to a degree, there's got to be something in it that makes it work, right? I mean, if you think about like other skincare products, like, you know, there's a reason why things have retinol in it. There's a reason why things have hyaluronic acid in it. Like there is a reason for that. And we have to trust that reason and purpose. But if that individual doesn't feel comfortable to put those on their bodies, like, yes, respect that, but also realize like there's a purpose for everything. There's a reason Mm -hmm. why these things are being put in these products. And I think it's just being more vigilant, more aware of things. And there are safer chemical sunscreens than others. I will say that usually cheaper sunscreens have more of a book of ingredients than Mm -hmm. other, you know more expensive sunscreens. And that's something to also consider. Mineral sunscreens are also sometimes more expensive than others. But again, that is for a reason. So I think people get caught up in this debate and it's kind of like, well, whoa there, like, let's take a step back. and Let's think about the rationale between, Mm -hmm. you know, the two sunscreens. Yeah. And I think another thing that's really made mineral sunscreens have such a strong force over the past couple of years is they no longer have the white cast associated with them, which was a lot of people's like, no go. I can't wear this because we didn't want to walk around with like sunscreen that gets rubbed off on all of our clothing. And we're walking around and we're like, just, you know, white from the sunscreen. And it doesn't work like that anymore. Like there's so much research and I mean, just so much has been put in these mineral sunscreens to make them not have the white cast. And I mean, I will say the sunscreen I wear today is not the same as the sunscreen I wore when I was growing up. I mean, that sunscreen was like a thick coat of like super ultra like lotion that it just like felt like your skin couldn't breathe. And thankfully, that's not the case anymore, which I mean, I love all of these innovations in sunscreen. It makes me so happy that we're putting time and energy and money into figuring out what actually works. So people don't feel like they have to wear around like basically just heavy lotion on them 24 seven. I know, gross. I know, not ideal. Um, 
Well, kind of going into that, I mean, everyone has also been talking about how to apply sunscreen. And this really goes into the fact of like, how can you layer sunscreen with makeup? Um, if you're using retinol, you have to be careful of sun safety. All of these things are starting to come into effect. And there was actually an article about applying SPF by Refinery29. And I wanted to bring this up because Refinery29 just partnered with the Skin Cancer Foundation for this incredible campaign. And Leah, I know you're nodding your head. Do you want to talk about the campaign? <laughs> Yes. No, I, okay. So I shared that probably once a week on my Instagram yeah, because, um, so I've been kind of on the side, I've been working with the skin cancer foundation for the last couple of months. One of them helping them really sp spread awareness, you know, about, um, you know, banning these tanning beds, especially for teens to get access to them because hi, hello. I was a teen that got signed off by my parent to go into a tanning bed. Um, and we're seeing melanoma and skin cancer rates happen in younger individuals. So that's why this ban, um, which hopefully is going to lead to law, um, mm -hmm. um, is just so important. And so I, I, I was so excited when the Skin Cancer Foundation um, got this campaign together. And I um, actually um, was helping them out too in person as well last month. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got to be a volunteer for them kind of for a couple of days. And I was like, physically having people sign these petitions to ban, awesome. you know, teen access to tanning beds, which was so awesome. So it was cool to like do it on social media and then like do it in person. Um, and they met their goal. So they, they awesome. got like all their signatures plus more um, because this could be a huge deal, um, you know, to get this law passed and have it be banned, you know, across the United States. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I knew it was something that you felt super passionate about. I know I was seeing your stories and then sharing it on our stories and just trying to get people to recognize it because I think we all know someone or ourselves who have used tanning beds and are like, if I can stop someone else from making the same decision I did, I'm going to do it. Um, and this is a fantastic way to bring attention to it. And Refinery29 has been a pretty strong force when it comes to sun safety. I mean, they have a whole segment of their website now called Sunblocked, where they share these kinds of stories. So this one about applying SPF the correct way has been one of those most recent stories. And they interviewed a dermatologist to talk about all of her, like, what are her key tips and points and takeaways to make sure you're getting as much protection from your SPF as possible. And she talks about how kind of three things I'll, I'll touch on that were kind of my key takeaways. Um, and the first one was she, she talked about rubbing in SPF may reduce the effectiveness. So if you think about putting a sunscreen on and you're rubbing it in and then you're applying a moisturizer on top of that, well, it's not sitting on like kind of the top layer of your skin and providing that protection. When you put a moisturizer in, the whole point is that it moisturizes, it soaks in and it moisturizes your skin. So that kind of brings into effect, like, are you applying it in the correct order, in the correct way. And people might be like, oh my God, there's a correct way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what does that even mean that there's a correct way? And I get that it's like a lot and that there's like a couple of nuances, but people are getting very, very in depth and in the know. Like I feel like people are starting to treat sunscreen as they would another step in their skincare routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I obviously do it now. Um, and I, I honestly, I don't wear makeup a lot. Usually like I just kind of try to let my face breathe on days. I don't yeah. have to wear makeup, you know, if it's not work or anything like related, but mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, the first thing that you guys should be thinking about, you know, as you're doing your skincare routine and putting on makeup is making sure that that SPF is on because I saw something on Instagram that if you just relied on the SPF in your makeup, like whatever yeah. it was, your foundation, concealer, what have you, mm -hmm. there was like roughly, don't quote me on this, but it was like roughly you would need to apply seven layers yes. of it to get to the protection that you would need to get like a minimal like SPF 30 thing. And I'm just like, can yeah. you imagine just like, no, I know. I know <laughs> your skin would not be able to breathe. <laughs> Yeah. So it's, it's crazy, but you know, like I said, kind of what I was talking about before, it's just like, we just kind of need to get to a point in our world where, you know, this is just something like how we would put like moisturizer, you know, after 
don't know, a shower or before bed or whatever, like remembering to put on SPF for the day, like even on your face, like make sure that that is like the first thing happening. And if you're going to be outside, like sweating and being outside again, like reapply it. And there are so many good, like tinted um, face sunscreens now yeah. that honestly, like some of mine that I have, like they go on like a good foundation or concealer and like, mm-hmm. I'm not mad about it. So yeah. I just feel like as we keep moving forward and more awareness and education is out about the importance of SPF and sun safety that these products are going to keep improving. And it's mm-hmm. honestly like some of these sunscreens, like MD Solar Sciences, the one, the, the brand that you guys carry is like, you feel like you are wearing nothing. It's like, amazing. That is how good it is. Yeah. Like it goes on like butter. It's so lightweight. There's like no gross scent or smell to it. And it feels like you are wearing nothing. And I yeah. put all of my sunscreens to the test because I always do my running test with it. So I yeah. am sweating. I am working out. I am out there for an hour in the sun. Like, so mm-hmm. if anybody's going to test sunscreen, like <laughs> I, I could be a tester for it because yeah. I put it to the test and like that one, MB Solar Sciences, I love, I need like a gas gallon size of I that. Know. It is I know. so good. I know. If they sold a gallon size, we would 100% carry it because I agree. <laughs> I mean, I think that's like one of those things where it's like you want a product that if you're going out and doing your workout, well, that's the time where you need to be wearing sunscreen. So if you have a product mm-hmm. on that makes you feel miserable while you're wearing it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to wear it. Right. And then you're right. out in the sun. And it's it's so tricky. But I think another thing that comes into that that those conversations that are having happening, woo, words are getting hard (laughs) that are happening is, you know, people are starting to learn that one application isn't enough. So if you have a sunscreen product you love, reapplying is not a problem because you're like, this is my favorite product. It's like my favorite lotion. It doesn't take away when I wear it. So that reapplication process is easier and reminding yourself that reapplying is something that you have to do also becomes easier, which just makes the whole sun safety thing just kind of mindless. Like you don't really have to think about it. If you get into a routine of it and it doesn't personally like bother you to do it, it's a lot easier. Right. Yeah. Honestly, it's it's better than getting skin cancer. That's all I have to say. <laughs> right. You know, it's right. you know, I, I get it. Some days I don't always want to buy sunscreen, you know? I'm like, oh you know, and but then you've got the alternatives like, you know, brands like L U V, low ultraviolet that have like, you know, and there was I think you guys just had I think somebody on the podcast that talked about yeah. how actually, you know, UPF fifty clothing is actually like the most reliable thing over sunscreen, right? Because, yep. you know, we're human. We forget to reapply sometimes. Totally. Like, it's okay. Don't be hard on yourself. Like we sweat, humans sweat. <laughs> so we are sweating yeah. off that sunscreen, right. you know? So that's why that UPF 50 clothing, like sometimes it's even better. Like yeah. it is better sometimes, you know? And so it's like, you kind of have to figure out, you know, your personal preference, you know, what kind of sunscreen you want, when you want to wear it, if you're not going to wear it, have backup options, have that UPF 50 clothing on you, have a hat, um, get an umbrella, find some shade. Like there Mm -hmm. are so many things. Like it's not about these like big monumental things when we're talking about sun safety, the small things lead to something bigger. It's those small little steps that you're taking every single day that you are creating as healthy habits that's going to change your life. That's going to protect your skin and ultimately make you a better, healthier person. Yeah, I completely agree. You don't have to make these dramatic life changes if you decide that you're going to start taking your your sun health, sun health seriously and skin health seriously. You don't have to make drastic changes. And thankfully, because brands are starting to recognize that, it's been easier than ever. I mean, Supergoop sells like a hand cream that before you go out in your car, you can put your hand cream on that has Mm -hmm. SPF in it and you don't have, it's like luxurious because it's such a nice brand and it smells good and it feels good. You don't have to think about it. But if you just get into the habit of doing those little things, they start to add up over time. Um, You know, we always talk about how, you know, sun damage is, it compiles, right? It, one thing leads to it. It's, I always like hesitate to talk about in that form because it sounds really scary when you talk about it like that, but that's also the reality. It's, it's, compounded over time sun damage that really damages your skin cells in your body yeah 
No. I mean, one, one thing I've been doing in the last couple of months that started this summer is I got the low ultraviolet sun wrap that I keep in my yeah. car. And mm -hmm. I, one, it's gorgeous. Like all of the prints are gorgeous. I actually should buy like one of all of them. <laughs> um, but I realized that I was doing a lot of driving um, mm -hmm. and I was going to be doing a lot of driving. And mm -hmm. I mean, applying sunscreen and then sitting in it just when you're in your car, sometimes yeah. like that can get kind of gross. I will be honest. So <laughs> having that sun, sun wrap on me from you guys has been game changer. Like you can wrap it to however you need it. However, the mm -hmm. sun is changing throughout the day, you know, while you're in your car and even that, like, you know, it just sits there. It's there when I need it. And that mm -hmm. has been a most recent, I know that's kind of random, but it's been a most recent, like small yeah. step that I've taken for sun safety um, that I know is going to, it's going to protect me, you know? Yeah, that makes me so happy. And even like Matt, I keep a sun wrap in his car too. I mean, he's driving home from work and the sun's coming in. He has it across his lap or across his arms. And it's one of those things that like once you start doing it, if you don't have it and feel that sun coming in, you start to recognize it, which is super interesting. You're like almost like training yourself to recognize those opportunities to take your skin health and seriously, in kind of a fun way. I don't know. I know I'm totally biased, but I love wearing the sun wraps. They make me feel so fancy. <laughs> They do. They do. It happened to me like last week. I was like, oh, sun's out. Where's my wrap? <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know. I love like, it. it. It is. It's funny how you just kind of, tra it is. you're training your brain to put sunscreen on. You're training your brain to be aware of the peak hours of the day. It's like, everybody thinks it's like, oh my gosh, it's like all these things I have to think about. And I, I said this the other day. It was just like, we, as humans, we always seem to make excuses when we think things mm -hmm. are going to be hard. And it's just yeah. like, don't do that with sun safety because trust me, skin cancer, not worth it. It's not a great consequences yeah. consequence for all your excuses you're going to tell yourself. It's just not yep. worth it. Yep. I totally agree. Um, well, those were our top five stories for October. That was so much fun. I love talking so through these things and we're going to make this a routine segment. So we'll be back again in November to talk about five more stories. Um, I will say if people are listening and they have certain stories they want us to talk about, you can send either Leah and I a DM on Instagram and we'll make sure it's included in the next roundup. Um, but Leah, thank you. You're a rock star. I so appreciate you coming on. Oh my gosh, Erica, thank you so much for having me. I could talk to you for hours, um, not just about sun safety <laughs> stuff, but just life in general. And um, I'm excited to see where this segment goes. And I'm already excited to um, you know, get into the next topics for next month. Yep, I agree. And if you guys want to connect with Leah, her Instagram is at the Leah Adams. Is that correct? Uh, it's actually at the elite, at the Leah Alexis. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I was like going back and forth. I'm like, wait, I always mess this up. <laughs> That's okay. But if you want to find me on Facebook, I'm Leah Alexis Adams. And okay. then on Twitter, I am, well, X, sorry, forgive me. <laughs> X, I am um, Leah Alexis 16. So it's kind of tricky, all three different, but if you go to the LUV page, you're going to find me. <laughs> so. You definitely will. We'll also link all that in the show notes so that you guys go to the correct places and not the incorrect handles that I accidentally send you to. <laughs> but Leah, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you.